Speaker, I commend this bill to the House. I call the Honourable David Parker. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Can I acknowledge the Minister's prior contribution? There are a couple of areas that I would disagree. Uh, the Minister said that there has been no prior knowledge that there, would, or that there, there was a risk that the um, surveillance powers of the police were under threat. Well, that may have been true a year ago, but it certainly wasn't true when the Tuhoi people started to make their appeals through the courts. And at the very least, from the moment the, Tuhoi, uh, the defendants in the Tuhoi cases were making their applications to the court, the government would have been receiving reports that the um, power of the police to gather surveillance evidence was uh, under question. Mr Speaker, I'll come back to the issue of whether this can be fixed in a different way that might be preferable to the way in which the government is proceeding. But I've got to say, it saddens me that today we've heard from two ministers who are saying that effectively they're not even going to consider the alternative methodology that's being proposed by other parties. They hide behind the fiction that it can't be drafted. They hide behind the fiction that it can't be drafted. I'm sure that they were advised by PCO that it was difficult to draft in time. I think that's the advice that the Attorney General said he received, and I accept he received that advice. And indeed, when uh, we were briefed earlier today by the Solicitor General, he said that he had, had received that same advice. The Labor Party's point is that that advice is wrong. We have, we have all but drafted the, uh, the amendments that are required through Charles Chevelle with some uh, assistance from various uh, parliamentary staff, uh, and it's almost there. So I, it saddens me that the government is saying no. We, we won't look at that as an option, because I think if you did, you might find that you had a bit more support for this legislation. <coughs> you, you have been looking at... at, the, at sorry, the member has been looking at the, 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 the information we've provided? Well, I hope that you'll let your members on the select committee do so. Mr Speaker, there's a, there's a very, very, there's a very um, difficult background to this, and it lies behind the nervousness of Māori as a consequence of the Tuhoi raids. And we need to be very careful of people's perceptions in an area like this. It's not just the reality of what needs to be fixed. There is a need to be fixing something here. There is a need for police to have proper powers of search and surveillance, and the Labour Party has already agreed that. But we need to recall that at the time we had anti-terrorism legislation effectively being used, uh, subsequently acknowledged that that was a wrong use of that and that there were no, no appropriate charges to be brought under that legislation. We had the, on our televisions, and even in a television I found it scary seeing those black clad uh, um, armed defenders squads in their masks with their, their um, high powered rifles uh, boarding buses that had school children on them uh, and uh, using the full force of the law on the people of New Zealand. Beg your pardon? Full force of the law and a bit more. A full force of the law and a bit more, uh, as Rodney Hyde says. Uh, and, uh, and I find that worrisome when that happens and when it happens inappropriately even more so. And I've got to say that irrespective of the niceties of the law here, I do think we have to have a look at the image that we present to people when we're enforcing the law, because I thought that looked a wee bit over the top in respect of what um, school children were seeing on a bus as they headed down the road. So we must be aware of that. Well, the other, next thing we have to do, we must respect our institutions of law. The Supreme Court is the highest court in New Zealand. They are the protection or one of the main protectors of New Zealand's civil liberties. And when they say that something's wrong, we should do the minimum to interfere with that decision in order to remedy what might be a consequence that we need to fix. Now, there are some things here that need to be fixed, but we ought to go about it in the way that causes people like Tuhoi and other people who are worried about civil liberties uh, the least amount of interference with, with, uh, the, with the decision that the Supreme Court has handed down. There's a couple of other points to be made. I don't like the Prime Minister saying that this will cause more crime or implying that somehow there's going to be more crime in society. There will be no more crime as a consequence of whatever this Parliament does on this. The issue is whether people will be effectively prosecuted 
for their crimes. So, Mr Speaker, let's not frighten people by saying there's going to be more crime as a consequence of what is or isn't done in this House of Parliament in the next few days. Let's focus on whether we're going to be um, appropriately empowering the police for the future and whether we're going to be letting off people who have previously been convicted of crimes or have yet to be tried for their crimes because their evidence can't be admitted. admitted. Can I say we should also take considerable heart from the fact that the Supreme Court was actually enforcing an Act of Parliament that we passed here, which is the Bill of Rights, which is meant to protect our citizens from inappropriate search and seizure. Let's, let's remember that. That's another reason to do the minimum here rather than give carte blanche in the meantime. Well, I don't know that I agree that we're doing the minimum here. That's one of the things we need to check. Mr. Mr. Um, Speaker, the next thing we need to remember is that the Bill of Rights already specifically says that even if evidence is illegally obtained, the court can still use it at its discretion if he thinks it's reasonable to do so, having regard to the seriousness of the offence. Or words to that effect. I might not have used the precise words. And indeed, that very provision has been used in respect to the two Hoy cases that are proceeding against Tama Iti and some of the other defendants. So we can take heart from that. Can I also sort of gently give a message to the court that the Parliament, having given that discretion to the courts, we expect it to be used in appropriate cases. And where I just ask the court to actually reflect occasionally on the pressure that they cause for inappropriate overreactions by Parliament when they don't exercise their discretion, or if they were not, I shouldn't say when, because I'm not saying they've done that, I'm saying if they were to be so um, uh, rare in the use of their discretion to admit illegally obtained evidence, then they would create a pressure from the public and in this Parliament for retrospective legislation uh, which, would, um, which would be undesirable. Mr Speaker, um, the Supreme Court does provide us with uh, considerable protection. Uh, they have found that the actions of the Crown through the, uh, through the police were illegal. Now, I think we just about all agreed in this House that police need powers of uh, surveillance. And I was on the Search and Surveillance Committee... Uh, the, sorry, the select committee that considered the search and surveillance bill and we reached that conclusion and I think everyone on that committee agreed that police need powers of surveillance and we came up with wording that has appropriate protections. It says what the pre prerequisite level of offending has to be depending on the sort of, act of search and surveillance. It says that you have to go to a judge. Now this idea that, um, that, that, that there's some sort of training regime that judges need before they can appropriately exercise these new warrants if we did it through picking up the provisions of the Search and Surveillance Bill, which is what both the Attorney and the Minister of Justice said. What nonsense that is. These are the same judges who are already giving all other sorts of, um, of, of warrants through their, um, under the Summary Proceedings Act. Is it the Summary Proceedings or Summary Offences Act? I've Summary Proceedings Act. Thank you, uh, Mr Attorney. Um, so I, I don't agree that that is a problem. In respect of the drafting problem, we've had three weeks here and it appears that the government started drafting in the last day or two. Three weeks. We, we're told that PCO find this too hard. This is the most important constitutional issue in New Zealand over the last month and we can't give it priority through the arms of government so that someone pulls their finger out and starts drafting the legislation, what sort of a government have we got on the other side? Do the job! Mr Speaker, in the absence of the government doing the job, the Labour Party has done most of it for them. And we've drafted appropriate amendments that we think do the business in respect of the prospect of power that the police do need in respect of search and surveillance. In respect of the issues as to re, um, retrospectivity, we need to hear from officials and advice as to whether there is a need for a retrospective fix. And until we've heard that evidence, I'm not in a position to say whether that's right or not. Mr Speaker, finally, I do point out that the, the government has been sitting on a bill since November 2010. I wrote saying three issues, which the ministers correctly said, press freedoms, Let's tidy up the serious fraud office powers at the same time as we confer similar powers on the police, which are a wee bit more constrained, and uh, another issue in respect of examination orders where people lose the right to, uh, to silence. It should be a bit more tightly prescribed. We haven't heard back from the 
from the government in just about a year on the substance of those issues, and that is part of the problem. I call the honourable member Keith Locke.